Hey welcome to Collins Creatures. This is my wall invertebrates and this is my Asian forest scorpion, Forest. And along with Forest, I also have an Emperor Scorpion named Emperor Palpatine and a Desert Harry Scorpion named Harry Potter. And today I'm gonna talk about basic scorpion anatomy. And why am I talking about scorpion anatomy? Well, if you keep scorpions, it's good for you to know the common and more scientific names for different parts of their body, so if you're talking with other scorpion people, you sound more professional. So that is what I'm going to be talking about today, the external anatomy of a scorpion. So first let's talk about what a scorpion is. Scorpions are arachnids, meaning they have four pairs of legs, eight in total. Arachnids also have two other pairs of appendages, the chelicerae and their pedipalps, which we'll get to in a bit. Arachnids also do not have antennae or wings like most insects do. The arachnid body is organized into the cephalothorax, a fusion of the head and the thorax, and the abdomen. Other kinds of arachnids are spiders, ticks, mites, opilions, which in the US are known as daddy longleggers, and pseudoscorpions. So first, let's talk about the exoskeleton. And the exoskeleton is exactly what it sounds like, an external skeleton that provides support to the scorpion's body and, is, and it is made of chitin. And while other invertebrates have it, like insects as well as other arachnids, the scorpion is unique in that their exoskeleton will actually glow under a UV light. So let's move on to body parts. As I said earlier, scorpions are arachnids and they have four pairs of legs, eight in total. And on the bottom of each of their legs, they have hook feet, which allow them to grab onto whatever surface they're on. And sometimes they're daring enough to walk upside down on your hand while you're holding them. And then one of the other pairs of appendages they have are their pedipalps, which in scorpions have evolved to turn into their claws. And, this, and their claws are used for limited defense, the manipulation of objects, and presenting food to the other pair of appendages being the chelicerae, which are their mouth parts which help grasp and chew up their prey before actually feeding it into their mouth. While most animals have a separated head and chest, arachnids have a combined head and chest in the cephalothorax. Cephalo referring to the head and thorax referring to the chest. And on the cephalothorax are their eyes. Scorpions will have between 6 and 12 eyes, with two of them being medial, meaning towards the middle, and the rest in lateral clusters which means towards the outside. And while they do have a lot of eyes, their vision is quite poor. And now we're on to the abdomen. The abdomen is actually called the opus thoma and contains most of the internal organs and is the largest part of the scorpion's body. The first portion is known as the mesosoma and appears like the main body part. And the second part to the opus thoma is the metasoma, which most people refer to as the tail, and it has five articulated segments, so it can bend, which is important because attached at the end is the telson, which can also be called the venom bulb, and obviously then it holds the venom and the venom gland. And attached to the end of the telson is the stinger, and the stinger delivers the venom, and the proper name for it is the aculeus, but most people call it the stinger. So you can see why the metasoma needs to be segmented so that it can effectively use the weapon at the end of it.
the other thing at the end of the metasoma, before the telson, is the anus. It is a hole that can be seen between the last metasomal segment and the telson, and I think you know what that is used for. On the underside of the scorpion, are their pectines. These are chemosensory organs like a nose or a tongue, which helps make up for their poor eyesight. The pectines are important because they help differentiate between the two genders. The males have longer fronds on their pectines. And this may be difficult to see on some scorpions. These are the spiracles, which are vented pores with which the scorpion exchanges air or breathes through. And finally, there are the setae. These are small hair-like sensory organs that are distributed on the scorpion's body and appendages. These can be most obviously seen on my emperor scorpion, Palpatine, on his giant claws. They sense movement of air and are very sensitive which is why you may have noticed your scorpion will move when you breathe near them. So that is the basic external anatomy of a scorpion. I hope you learned something. I certainly did while I was researching for this video, and I hope you enjoyed. So thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll see you on Collins Creatures.